This project is a shabby chic Christmas stocking. It is made out of wood and it is decoupaged with this recycled floral burlap paper. So the first thing I did is I had these wooden stockings which are just flat plywood and I painted them with one coat of a white primer. And then I am going to decoupage the recycled paper on top of the stocking. I have two of these and I wanted to make them mirror images of each other. So they're gonna be done exactly the same, just one going left and one going right. You'll notice I have, I'm working with burlap and twine and we have lots of little pieces to clean off of the um, workspace quite often in this project. So I've got my paper and I've cut two pieces to size and um, I cut them pretty close to size so I've got to work pretty carefully. So the first thing I did, I am applying my varnish to one of my stockings. Good coverage, not thick, thick, but really make sure that I get that varnish on all of the edges. I spritz the front of the paper to help it to relax and stretch a little bit so that I know that it is not gonna be um, full of wrinkles when I get it on my board. And then I level, just smooth it out with my hands lightly. Once I've got it all smoothed out, I notice that the edges are kind of ripply, so you wanna put some release cuts in there. And what that does is it helps the edges to, to lay down and not be pulled up by the fact that the, the part of the paper that has no decoupage medium on it is not as stretched as the other paper. And I'm going to finish decoupaging my stocking. Lots of little pieces of hair. Burlap hair. And there it's down, all nice and smooth. A few more release cuts. Some people call them relief or release. What they do is they release the paper. Any place I think I have not gotten the um, edges done, I'm going to go back and put the varnish there. Now, how to eliminate those wrinkles. I use a piece of plastic and a brayer and pretty much just move it, pushing any wrinkles out the edges. Smoothing it down. Once it's all smoothed down, I can put my sealer on and I top coat it with varnish to create a seal. Because we have other embellishments to put on this stocking and I want it to be all set. Second stocking is done exactly the same. Decoupage it, smooth it out, give it some release cuts, smooth out the wrinkles, give the second stocking a top coat, and we've got our second stocking and our first stocking at the same place. Up, 
a sneak peek of what they're going to look like. And now on to some embellishments. So what I am using is a piece of muslin, which I have stamped with our Kindness Regard stamp from IOD. And I used a dark, probably a, a I think I used a black ink and because it's off-white muslin it looks a little bit gray. I've cut some strips so that I will have some ribbons with the same writing on it. I've got some lace and these are the pieces that we're going to kind of hang off to make it look shabby. The other thing we have is the roses which are made out of burlap. But before we make our roses, let's stamp the stars. I am using a just a tiny little stamp that just has a very small sentiment on it. This one says joy. I'm using Tim Holtz Distress Ink in a color called Vintage Photo. It gives it kind of a, um, a brownish gold on the um, natural wood color it comes out really nice very vintagey it is not archival ink though again so that you really do need to not get it wet until it's thoroughly dry put my ink on and then I take away whatever is along the edges so I don't mess up my star and there it is I'm going to do the second star exactly the same. And then I am going to distress the edges. I use my shader. Again. And I need to put a piece of paper underneath them so I don't get that ink everywhere because like I said, it is not an archival ink, so it'll stay wet and be easily smudged and I'll get it all over my hands. Just getting the tips of the stars, kind of just putting a, kind of like a border around them, framing the joy in. second joy. Put them aside to dry. And we've got that done. Now to make the burlap roses. This is a really simple way to make a rose. I cut a two inch piece of burlap, which is about 12 inches long, taper one end, bring it kind of to a point, and then roll that edge really, really tight. And just keep, keep rolling it. Because it's tapered, it'll kind of sink down into the rows and, and look like a very tight center. Once I've got a nice center, then I start twisting and rolling. Twist it a couple of times, roll it. And you twist and roll all the way around till you get to the end. And what that does is it gives you nice shaped petals rather than it doesn't just look like a roll. Twist and roll. Sounds like a dance. All the way to the end.
okay now I want that rows to stay together so what I am going to do is I have some stitch fix glue which is pretty similar to a glue gun only it is a liquid glue and I am going to put a big glob of that onto a piece of paper and I'm going to attach my rose to that pushing it down into the glue so it really gets all of those edges on the back caught in. Then I'm going to cut it out and it is ready to be glued on to my stocking once it's all dry. That glue is really good. That one is glued down and now the second rose is glued down. Takes a little while to dry so I do them and let them sit for a little while cutting all the hairs off because it's twisted and rolled you won't have it won't continue to shred which is nice so you won't continue to have shredded burlap everywhere And now we are going to work on the stocking. The reason I printed the fabric was so that I could use it for the heel and the toe of the stockings to really make it look shabby. So I made a pattern just by tracing the end of the toe and I am cutting out two toes and you'll see two heels and then I am going to just glue them down to the and I'm, I am using a fabric glue glue them down on right on the stocking So I have two heels and now actually I think that were, those were the toes so now I'm going to cut the heels. And again I just made a simple pattern out of a piece of paper by tracing it around the wooden piece and I am cutting Sometimes it's easier to use a smaller piece of fabric when you're cutting something. So I'm just going to, and yes, I could lay it down and pin it out, but this is so much easier. Just cut it out. It doesn't have to be exact, exact, exact. You'll see once you put the glue onto the um, fabric, the fabric also stretches just like paper does. And we're ready. My stocking is almost dry, but I'm going to start working with it. I'm going to cut away all of the excess paper. You can see it's still a little bit shiny and some of the paper still shows a little bit of wrinkle, but it will disappear once that is totally dry. So I want to cut as close to the edge as I possibly can so that I can get this stocking done. These um, stockings, these wooden stockings, I got these at Hobby Lobby and they were on sale for half price. Literally, they cost $2.50 at full price, so I paid $1.25. Now, the, I want to sand off, go one way and sand off that extra little bit of paper that is on the edge. comes off pretty easy. And I'm using probably a 220 um, piece of sandpaper because I do not want to start sanding the wood. I just want to get that paper off the edge. And some of I can get later. 
And there's my toe. I've got my adhesive, my fabric, decoupage fabric glue, and I am going to glue down that toe. With fabric, you can use a little more than you do with paper because it does absorb it all. So you see I'm putting extra on because, and then I've decided I'm going to put more on and I'm going to put it on the um, actual fabric. So this is archival ink, so it is not affected at all by the glue, doesn't smudge at all. Just keep in mind, you have to use quite a bit more glue with the fabric, even though this is a super thin, just piece of muslin. There's my toe, and now for my heel. This project is a combination of new materials and scrap and products that things we've used from other projects and it just works. And you can see once you put the glue and you wet the um, fabric, it does stretch. So I'm pushing it in to where I want it. A little more glue and let's let that one dry. I still got some edges that I would like to get rid of that extra paper. And now we have time to work on the cuff. So I am going to make this cuff look a little bit like fur. First, I'm gonna open up that hole so that I'll have something to hang it with because I'm gonna be covering that with something that looks like snow. Pentart makes this great snow paste. I love it, it dries nice and hard. It works perfect for this kind of a project. It just only comes in these little jars. I wish it came in a bigger jar, but it works perfect. And you'll see it's white as snow, easy to go on. All you do is just stipple it on, add a little more if you want more or a little less if you want less, but just stipple it all over the top of the cuff to make it look like fur or snow. It doesn't take as long as you think it would to dry either. I would say it'd be totally dry in an hour, even if you put it on pretty thick. You do want to make sure that you wash the brushes and um, whatever else that you may have. Sometimes I will use a, a artist's knife, um, whatever you've used to put on the snow paste because it does dry very hard, almost like a, a cement. But there it is. Perfect little snowy cuff. Now it's time to add the final shabby chic embellishments. The first thing I want to do is make sure that I can hang my stocking. 
So I have a piece of twine and I am going to poke a hole right through that snow paste so that I have a place to hang the stocking up with and tie some, a piece of twine there. I'm going to knot it and I'm going to cover the knot with my ribbons that are going to just kind of free flow, be kind of shabby and put my rose on top of it. I have ribbons, I have my ribbon lace and I also have the ribbon that I made out of the um, stamped fabric and we're just going to kind of hang them all, tie them all together and have them hanging off the side of our stocking. And I'm going to actually use a glue gun to glue them all on once they're all how I want them. And I'm going to glue that rose right on top of them, hiding all of the ends. Because the snow paste is still wet, I'm not going to be able to have it um, glue them on right now. But once the snow paste dries, I'm going to put them all together and go ahead and glue them on. And like I said, I will put that rose right on top so that it kind of hides any ends that are, are raw ends. And that's how it's going to look when it's all done, glued on top of the stocking.